Oh, Mugen, you're funny. Yeah. So, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're from. Got me coffee. I'm ready. Got me water. That's ready. So, how are you doing today? Oh, yeah, that's the way to start the day. Some Linux and a cup of coffee. So, today, I am doing what most Linux users won't. I am right now on a Windows 10 laptop. And why am I doing that? Well, I'm going to uh, go through the steps of uh, installing or creating a USB for to turn this laptop into a um, cloud-ready um, Chrome OS. So, Johan, welcome. Yes, blasphemy it is. But uh, what I wanted to see is if this little thing can handle it. And I wanted to do some screen sharing with it. Um, uh, I'm in Google Hangouts. I'm going to, you know, see if um, some of my other Linux friends show up and uh, want to join the stream and talk about it. So why do I want to do a cloud-ready um, Chromium OS? I want to see what the hype's about. If you know, if if, if it's even close to being a, a, a Chromebook, um, uh, I've heard you know decent things about you know, the the cloud ready version. I think it's always like a version behind Chrome, um, but we'll we'll talk about that. Um, and I just figured it'd be something different today. Um, um, you can say a lot of people are at the pseudo reboot stream. Probably, you know, um, he's uh, he shows some good stuff, but uh, uh, I'm you know trying to keep up with my Sunday morning stream, so we'll go from there. So, what kind of coffee you guys like to drink? I'm a Javalia fan. I've been drinking Javalia for years. Oh, you're at both, Johan. Multitasking. So he'll keep you awake. I'll put you to sleep. Okay, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll balance you out. No. <clears throat> so, and um, I haven't used Windows 10 with Hangouts. I haven't used Windows 10 hardly at all, except when I'm helping my wife or my son on their laptops. Um, it wasn't, you know, it was a little bit different getting set it up this morning. Um, um, I got my, um, um, C20 Logitech camera connected to it and, uh, of course the headsets, um, it hooked up pretty decently. So we'll, we'll see what the, we'll, we'll see if this can stream and download and create a USB for the cloud ready. Chromium OS. Um, and the other reason why I'm doing it on Windows um, is because there's only two ways to create this USB, and that is to have it done on Windows or Mac. Uh, for whatever reason, uh, CloudReady has not, you know, made it available to be done on Linux, even though we're technically going to be installing a, a Linux system. Um, all right, Musing, go get you go 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 juice. Can't start the morning without it. Um, so that's the uh, the plan for today, and then we'll chat for a little bit um, after the stream later on today. I'll then um, install it. I have run um, the Chrome Ready in a um, live usb but i it didn't give me the um, you know the, the true feeling 
So we'll we'll see what happens. Um, the laptop that I'm on is uh, let's see, it's a uh, HP Elite Book. Uh, it's a newer one. Um, I looked it up the other day. Excuse the tilt. I'm trying to see where the all the other ones have the um, stuff on it. Um, it's a three, now four-year-old laptop. I think it was done in um, uh, uh, 2015. Uh, as far as Windows 10 on it, I was reading a review. It's, it's not a great laptop. Um, but it's a good one. It comes with four gigs of RAM. It's got an i5 processor in it. Um, it's got a lighted keyboard, um, so it, that looks nice. Um, and it's actually uh, the memory is upgradable to 16 gigs of RAM, where all my other HP books are only able to go up to eight gigs of RAM. So, Johan, HP works great with Peppermint. I have no problems. I heard other people have lots of problems. Um, I mean, it's on Peppermint and Peppermint Respin are on two different HP uh, laptops. Um, I know uh, I my, my father-in-law, I gave him an HP workstation, uh, and Peppermint 8 is working fine on that. I gave another workstation to a buddy of mine. He's running Peppermint um nine on it and uh he's not having any problems um others say it, it doesn't work really well but I, I i don't have any problems with it so that's what we're gonna do this morning so um let's see i gotta remember i got i got too much going on here i got my desktop i got the laptop and i'm always going for the mouse so uh, I hate the mouse pad, but we're going to go for a little screen share, and then we're going to talk about, um, we're going to go to Never Ready site. Okay, let me, all right, so. Where do you get cloud ready from? You go to um, www.neverware.com and say hello to crowd ready. So their statement is cutting edge hardware, not as important as a cutting edge OS. So it's an OS for the enterprise, um, education, um, here's some comments on it. And what we're going to do today is we're going to go and get the free version. So, Johan, your Pep 8 is on your 2013 sleep book, and 9 we spin on your HP all in one. Nice. So, we go to the free version, and we're, it's which is going to be the home edition for uh, us regular users. Um, and we're going to need to install USB Maker. Oh, and if any time, for whatever reason, if Windows 10 can't keep up with every, all this multitasking, and if the stream dies, please stay in the room. I'll open up another stream, and I'll send a link to it. Okay, guys? All right, so. And actually, I think, oh, called Ready USB Maker. Let's see, let me hide the little... Google thing there. Okay, so. We downloaded the Cloud Ready USB Maker.
Okay, so what you will need is an 8 to 16 gig USB stick. Mine's a 16 gig. Whoops, and I just dropped it on the floor. Pop it in. Then we're going to hit next. Uh, it's a 64 bit computer. We're going to stay with that. Uh, they do not recommend SanDisk devices. USBs with more than 60 gigs of space are not recommended. The next screen will come available once the USB is validated. It's a general USB. Okay. And the star image is currently downloading. Um, is anybody having a problem viewing a stream? I'm watching the playback on my uh, desktop with uh, Firefox and it keeps the stream keeps dying or I mean, it might be a Firefox issue. So Johan, you bought the HP in July and immediately wiped Windows 10 installed PEP 9. Yeah, I had uh, I, I had turned my brother-in-law onto um, peppermint, and uh, he went out and bought himself a new new uh, laptop. And at the time, he installed Pep Seven on it. Yeah, I mean, I made I got my uh, laptop hooked up to the internet uh, cord. I, I'm I figured I'm not going to do wireless on this. Yeah, maybe it's a YouTube thing. I'm, I'm, uh, or maybe it's a Windows thing. It's telling me I shouldn't be using Windows. So, uh, Oh, it's still in warranty, but the HP never let me down. Well, so this process is going to take a while. So I'm going to um, stop screen sharing for a moment. Cause yeah, that take that that part takes um, it's probably one of the longest. Um, yeah, it says uh, creating your cloud ready USB installer can take up to twenty minutes. It's probably one of the longest um, USB things. Hello, Timo. How are you doing, my friend? Welcome. Oh, you got cloud ready on an HP laptop. Yeah, um, I mean, I, uh, you know, there's a lot of controversy between Linux users about using Firefox or, you know, more secure, more private browser. Google just works for me. Um, you know, it, it, I've already been part of them for a number of years because of the, the uh, Android phones. I mean, we're never going to be totally... Um, um, private. I, I mean, the moment you're online, your internet provider's got all your information, whether they're tracking everything too. So that can be an issue. Um, Paul, how you doing? Welcome. You just arrived. Uh, interesting idea. What made you decide to do this? I guess to make sure I had something to do for the stream. Now, I, um, I've been looking at it for a while. Um, um, 
Tim on uh, Total OS talks about, you know, his cloud uh, Chromebook and that. Um, I know it's not going to be a pure Chromebook, but we'll see how it works while it's installed. I've done it from a live USB, and um, it's a pretty bad experience, at least on my part, uh, with doing um, the cloud ready uh, from a live USB. It's very slow. It's, um, uh, you know, anytime I kind of log off or whatever, I have to reinitiate my Google account. Yeah, Paul, I get criticized for using Chrome and Chromium. I get criticism, but use what works best. You know, exactly. Work, what works for you? Um, uh, like I said, I'm I'm uh, on the laptop. I'm streaming on the laptop, but on my desktop, I'm viewing the stream to make sure it goes, you know, okay. And I'm using Firefox because the last time I I used, I went into my own account on another machine. It kept knocking out my chat. Um, and uh, I see this, you know, the stream going in and out. Um, but anyway, so uh, using. Chrome, you know, since I got it on a couple of devices and it syncs, I know you can sync up Firefox and Chromium and all that. I know Google's grabbing their stuff, you know, and tossing ads at you. But I, I don't know. Honestly, I don't look at ads barely. I mean, they're, they're there. I ignore the crap out of them. I mean, there is nothing I click on. You know, there's barely anything that interests me. Um, and I because I know that if they're throwing it up there, they want me to click on it and look at it. If I want to look at something, I'm going to go search it myself. Um, again, honestly, I've seen these win on a stick options for a few years now. And honestly, unlike Linux, it can, I, I'm concerned it would affect my system due to MS past performance on their OSs. Um, so, Tim, you're getting ready for the day, and the cloud really works well and keeps the browser updated. I, I, I heard that it does pretty good on the updates, um, you know, uh, We'll see what the new system, you know, kind of looks like. Um, whoops. Too bad the installer doesn't show a steady process and that. So we'll go back to it once. Oh, excuse me. Well, hello, Red Robo. How are you doing? Welcome to the stream. I appreciate you stopping by. Um, you know, if you're just watching right now, I am. We're going through the process of creating a cloud-ready USB to install. Um, I guess you would call it Chromium OS, though. On the website, let me see. They don't really. They just call it cloud ready, but they use, um, so let's see. So they're using, uh, uh, they call it the, the home editions, cloud ready home edition version 70.4. So if anybody's, you know, we've got a Chromebook, um, Maybe you can tell if you got a newer Chromebook or the um, software edition what version it's on. Uh, Paul, you need really need to get a short sleeve version of this shirt. Yep, my wife got this for me for Chris, no, for our anniversary, and uh, you know this lovely mug. Linux installed. It's now safe to turn on your computer. Yeah, the Cloud Ready uses the Chromium browser because I technically Chrome's. Um, their you know google's version of it but um i'll, I'll have to I, I think i posted it once my wife told me where she got it it's actually a place that makes not just um lennox stuff all sorts of t-shirts and all that good morning carmine how are you so <laughs> morning trips to the bathroom are cloud ready <laughs> 
I don't want to know. Oh, my gosh. Carmine, you're the best. How are you this morning? Another night. Um, I'm glad you were on last night. Um, I'm glad everybody we can all help out. Um, it's always good to have you on. Uh, I wish I could have stayed on longer than the after chat. I know most of them going to bed. Um, my wife came home, so I wanted to spend a little bit of time with her before I went to sleep. I will, Paul. I'll, I'll post a, I'll post a link um, later today. Um, um, yeah, I, the old timers moment. I can't remember um, uh, exactly where, but it's it, it. Yeah, she knows me. You know, she thought it would be nice to show on my streams and that. So, and she's exactly right. Um, so, Red Robo, the cloud ready version, is usually one of the two versions of Chromium behind official Chrome. But you can enable developer option and settings, which gets you the latest updates. Very cool. Carmine, anything for laughs? You know, you got to have some humor in this. You know, in this this day and age, if we don't have any humor, we're not going to get through. All right, Timo. Thanks for stopping by. Um, have a good day. Um, be safe. Um, um, Stop by tomorrow night. I'm going to, um, later today, I will install the um, Chrome, uh, the cloud ready, and I'm going to stream from it tomorrow. We'll see how that works. Um, it'll be interesting because it's going to be probably, you know, from the Chromium browser, and I've not done Hangouts or that from Chrome, Chromium, but hopefully it works. We will find out. Mugen, uh, I fell out before toss and VDL and the, yeah, getting old bites. Yeah, you know, I'm 62. Um, usually, I'm try I'm in bed by between uh, by 11 o'clock. I'm not a real early to bed guy, but uh, I um, I get up about between 5:30 and 6 every morning. Um, you know, it'd be nice on a Sunday just to like lay in bed, but I kind of have a chronic back problem and unfortunately I can't stay in bed for long. So it works perfectly to get up and be with uh, some friends and talk about Lennox and that. So let's see how the installer is doing. Yep, still working. And I can hear the fan on the laptop going pretty good. So Windows 10 is chugging it along. Um, let's see if I can remember where to go on Windows 10 to find out what what my resources are doing right now. Let's see. There's a uh, Hey Carmine, does Windows 10 have a setting to see what uh, how your resources are doing? I do not honestly remember. Figure out if I'm. Uh, really up there right panel test oh, okay thank you Okay, there we go. Thank you, Carmine. All 
Uh, no, I guess not too bad. It's it is using sixty two percent of the memory and about seventy percent of the CPU doing everything I'm doing right now. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, it is. so it's uh out of uh, the four gigs of uh, memory. This Windows 10 to do all this right now is using about two and a half gigs. Well above what if I was on Peppermint doing this, maybe. Okay. Thanks, Carmine. Appreciate it. Yeah, Johanna, Pep got raving reviews. Um, I mean, in a, in a way, the, the respin wasn't a whole lot to talk about. Um, there were some nice, neat little um, improvements. Um, uh, I, I, I really do like um, where you can click and, and get the system information, the, 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 the system information without having to go to the... Um, uh, terminal and type in some commands. Um, that's really handy, especially when posting to uh, maybe the form or that. Um, the uh, turning on and off of NeoFetch. Although, um, uh, well, Johan, was it you that pointed out that uh, it showed on my NeoFetch um, that it was using Edwada as a theme? I don't, because I know I didn't change the theme on the Peppermint Respin. I know I was playing around with it, but um, yeah, um, I'll have to ch I'll check that out. I don't know if that's a bug. I know I didn't change anything because it definitely is not the Edwada theme. Um, so, uh, Paul, you're running Arco Linux with a dual boot with Peppermint. What version of Arco Linux are you running? And then you can actually, one thing y'all brought up on BDL about on Google Chromium. I haven't had a chance to check that out yet. And then the Libra Fox. Pick my interest as I'm a bit fed up with the lack of security in most mainstream browsers, including Brave. Yeah. Um, I mean, is anything ever super secure? Carmine's always saying, you know, you can have the most secure system and have a m moment you're on the internet. You know, and um, one thing that's really never talked about is you know how much our um uh, internet providers um information they can't track from us um while we're surfing unless you're using a vpn which not everybody can afford good morning ramon how are you doing uh, Red Robo, I think Chrome OS will have a great year. Looks great, runs smooth, even on older and inexpensive hardware. There are some powerful web apps out there, things like photo editing and music. Yeah, we'll see. So EB's back on the pep, Johan. I don't think he ever left. I mean, EB's a uh, he's a character, isn't he? Man, what a what a great guy to lead the uh, you know Linux generation. Um, opinionated, but man, he's very knowledgeable. Um, I, I enjoy the crap out of his stuff, especially when he goes on a rant. Um, thank you, Ramon. Yeah. Um, you like the t-shirt, yeah. But uh, yeah, EB is, um, you know, very supportive, um, very approachable. Um, nothing like when I first, 
you know, even just like five years ago, four years ago, just getting into Linux. And, uh, um, you know, again, I always talk about how I found Carmine um, and a couple of the other guys, but there were a few out there. It was like, you know, they're, they're working on Linux, but it's like total negative. I don't know why they're doing this. I don't know why they're doing that. I, you know, if you want to promote something, you got to at least sugar it up a little bit. You know, you want to tell everybody the honest truth. Yes. But do you want to beat it down to where no one wants to even try it? That, that, that was wrong, you know, but EB was always, you know, um, showing some great stuff. Yeah, I'm glad I got on a little bit before him. I expected him to go on a little bit longer, but you know, you know, it was it was um he he's 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 great. Uh, and the process is still going on. So uh Oh, uh, uh, Ramon, uh, the Peppermint 9 respin. So uh, when did they start that? I think they started it with Peppermint 7 doing a respin. So the, 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 the main version comes out, right? So over the next couple months, it's almost like how uh, you know Ubuntu say they came out with 1804, then they came out with 1810. So the uh, peppermint it's still based on 1804 you know they don't change it to 1810 but they do their own little updates so what they did was um they added um and uh onto the, the settings panel um an accessibility feature um they added uh to be able to turn neofetch on and off with a switch from your terminal um they added the ability they, they took out vlc because um, VLC has been uh, kind of troublesome lately, and they added X player. Um, they um, then added a uh, setting to you do a uh, you can get all your information instead of having going to the terminal and typing out um, um, a couple of commands to get the information on your system. You click one thing, it brings up the Sakura, um, and it it gives you everything about your information so you have it at a glance and then you and it automatically copies it to your clipboard so like if you went to the peppermint forum and you wanted to post a question i have this you know i have this issue in that and then you you know do here's my system and post it so the guys that are looking at it um it uh, have your information right off the bat and they don't have to give you commands and all that. So it was like very little tweaks, but it, it's, it's stuff that really, you know, keeps the system improving and, 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 and nice for users and that. Yeah. I mean, you know, uh, it, it's going to take a while. Like I said, it's, it's, you know, running over two and a half gigs to keep everything running right now. Um, Red Robo, Steve, I was lucky when I first moved to Linux about 18 months ago, I stumbled across Derek from DistroTube, Carmine, and Rocco, Rob, great bunch of Linux advocates. Yes, they are. Um, you know, um, they are good leaders. They're, you know, they don't um, um, beat everybody. Um, they're honest. Um, and they tell you when, when mistakes happen. I mean, look what happened to... Um, uh Morocco last night he he doing his doing his stream from arch i don't know what version of arch or which what he was doing hi yugi how you doing today buddy um how he was but everything froze on him he had to bring out his um uh cell phone to kind of watch the stream and make sure everything was going because everything froze on him and those things happen, you know. Um, you know, he's been doing this for a while, and 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 problems happen. Um, so.
So uh, if um, anybody wants to join in the chat, shoot me an email at stevesveryown at gmail.com. We'll bring up Hangouts while we're waiting. You know, it's a combination. It's it's Windows and it's this way Cloud Ready, um, how it makes their USB, I guess. It does take quite a while. Um. Oh, <laughs> Yugi, did you lock your doors? Did you see any flying monkeys? Oh, wait, did you see any flying poop from monkeys? There we go. So, Ramon, uh, what, Rocco tried a live stream on New Year's Eve, but it did not work very well? Yeah, I mean, it, it happens. I mean, you know, we're at the mercy also of um, YouTube. We're at the mercy of our Internet providers. We're at the mercy of the Internet, you know, uh, and at any given moment, you can be off and, uh, you know, it, it just happens, you know. Uh, well, you know, it's not a beautiful day. Yesterday was nice and sunny. Uh, today is gray. Um not a, not a real happy day, but it, it should be a good day. Um, it's 35 out. It got no close to 50 the last two days here. I know, Carmine, I think it was warm by you, too. It, it stretched across the uh, uh, states there in a little brief reprieve from the cold. Um, so... Uh, so we're at the mercy of, you know, every little thing, you know, um, in, in doing this, uh, you know, look how many streams EB, you know, kind of crapped out on, on him. And, uh, you know, like I said, if anything happens, if Windows 10 or the system can't handle this, stay in the chat. I'll open up a new chat. I'll go on, I'll go on my peppermint and we'll just let this thing slide. So, Yugi, there's no monkeys. It's all good. I told my family what the monkey news. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, um, Florida has been a, especially in the Glades area, a drop-off point for all sorts of creatures that people thought would be cool to have and then couldn't raise them or they got too big. I mean... I think a lot of the snakes that are in the Everglades, um, you know, uh, these, these monkeys and all that, you know, it's it's a warm state. It's it's uh, water is readily available throughout the middle. So Ramon, you prefer sunny days? It rained all three days. Well, yeah, you know, that stinks when it rains all day, you know, and you don't see the sun. Um, you can, there's always zero net and other decentralized versions that you don't need to go through on an IP that just that simple. Well, it looks like, ah, okay, here, I'm going to go back and let's uh, screen share again. This time I'll try that. All right, so we're ready to install Cloud Ready. Um, so at this point, I can reboot and start up, but I'm just going to do finish. So that took, yeah, it took a while. I started, it took a little bit more than 20 minutes, I think. So. That's all ready to go. So that was the fun portion of the two our kids.
Okay. All right, so I guess I'll just leave the USB in there. And then we'll see what uh, later on. And tomorrow night I'll get back on from the uh, Cloud Ready Chrome OS version and see what it's like. Um, Yeah, I Megan, mean, of course, one has to trust the other peers one is connected to. Yeah. I mean, a lot of that stuff kind of boggles my mind as far as networking and using VPNs and all that stuff. But... Um, So again, if anybody wants to uh, kind of join and chat in, we're, we're done with that. So yeah, I just want, want I want to give um, the cloud ready a try. I'm not going to give up my peppermint or anything like that. Um, if it works well on this laptop, I know a couple people that are in need of a, um, a, a good laptop that can't afford one. And uh, I don't necessarily want to give them Windows and uh, they might not necessarily be ready for Linux. So, good morning, or good afternoon, good good whatever it is over there in Australia. Vince, welcome. How are you? <laughs> Given the choice, you'd rather trust a biker gang over the cops? I guess it depends on what biker gang. Yes, there's my shirt again. Geek by nature, Linux by choice. And again, my, my coffee mug. So. With Javalia in it. It's good stuff. So, Sleepy, do you ever sleep? I mean, I, I, it just boggles my mind that you're able to make all these streams. I appreciate you jumping on because I think it's what? Um, one o'clock in the morning for you over there, something like that, and a Monday morning too. At that, you know, it's just amazing. Here we are, you know, we're we're connected to the world here, right? And then you know, we got um, you know, Vince who's over there in Australia, and he's what seventeen hours ahead, so he's in the Monday already, you know. You know, yeah, it's crazy since we last spoke. You've been to sleep. It's still essentially the same day for me. Yeah, it, 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 it um, it's cool, but it's it, you know, it's 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 wild. I mean, that's the other. That's the the plus side of the internet and and all this is we get to talk to people around the world, and um, you know, get to know people better. Um, find out their likes and dislikes. Oh, you have a day off tomorrow? Yeah, uh, Johan. I've been, I'm, with the holiday, I've had two days off during the week, but pretty much since our, our, our Labor Day in September, I've worked six days a week, uh, every week up till now. Um, it's just been a struggle at work to get time off without messing things up. That's the joy of being in retail. You know, Sundays, unless hell or high water, I am not going into work. Most Saturdays, I don't have to stay all day. But it's hard to get off a, a second day right now. Um... The original Road Rash is a fun game. I don't know, a couple of your messages, were you retracting them, um, Paul? Because some of your messages didn't uh, actually, you know, let me change this. 
I'm not on live chat myself, so there we go. I don't know why they have the two options, top chat and live chat. It just should be live chat. Five days a week, Johan, 6 a.m. to 1.30 p.m.? That would be part-time for me. Um, I'm usually 7 a.m. to 5. Actually, I mean, technically I'm supposed to, you know, I only have to work till 5, but being salary and being a manager, I'm usually there from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. 6 p.m. sometimes later often you know once in a while I get to get out of there by 5 30 and that's early for me so let's see what Windows has done since The USB option is done. So performance wise, yeah, we're still at two and a half gigs of memory being used. And the CPU is hovering around you know fifty to seventy percent use. So I guess if I was to do much more of anything, it would kind of like choke. Oh, okay, Paul, you because autocorrect. Doable. It works for me, Johan. Yeah, oh got it. I don't know what I would do if I was working 32 hours a week, you know. Um, there's a meme, Mimi? Is it a mem or is it a Mimi? What What are they? And it had a picture of um, what's his name from uh, Mad Men having a, you know, he had a drink. And he goes, oh, you're working 40 hours a week? I remember when I used to work part-time. All right, so let's see what else we can talk about here. So, yeah, so uh, I'll do the cloud ready later. Um, we'll see how good that is. Um, So in some little Linux news, so um, I had gotten an, uh, a new car um, a few months, a few weeks back. I got myself a Ford Escape, and it's pretty nifty. It's got um, you know a lot of cool gadgets in it. Um, it's got um, the Sync Three, so I can do my Android Auto. Um, but I found out that the the Sync Three runs on uh, some kind of BlackBerry software, which was interesting. Um, it used to be run on a, a Windows kind of um, subsystem, but I guess there were issues, and they went with this BlackBerry. So uh, uh, here's an article uh, from Slashdot. Linux for cars. Tesla isn't the only automaker running Linux under the hood. So while some companies like Tesla run their own homebrew Linux distros, most rely on automotive-grade Linux AGL. AGL is a collaborative cross-industry effort developing an open platform for connected cars with, only, with over 140 members. Its membership includes Audi, Ford, Honda, Mazda, Nissan, Mercedes, Suzuki, and the world's biggest automobile company, Toyota. Why? Automakers are becoming software companies, just like in the tech industry. They are 
realizing that open source is the way forward, said Dan Couchy, AGL's executive director, in a statement. So Linux under the hood, what do you think, guys? Um, I know, was it um, uh, uh, Das Geek? Um, Yeah, his in, in, in his auto. Uh, I don't know if he added a new um, uh, uh, entertainment system or it was in there, but he hacked it and got Linux to work on it. Um, I forget what version. I know he's got a a, a, um, a video on it. So how many out there would be the first would uh, bring that car home and then want to hack into it? Yeah, Paul, your wife's a teacher. Uh, I, you know, I, uh, teachers here in the states, um, you know, uh, they they get a bad rap. There are some not very great teachers, and I think sometimes, um, uh, what do you, you know, um, the the um, you know, when they've been a, a old timers moment, uh, when they've been, a, you know, on the job for, you know, many years, um, you know, they get all sorts of seniority and things like that and become kind of, um, I don't want to say lazy. That's not the word I want to use, but com complacent, you know, because they're not going to get fired. But, you know, here are, are people that are, uh, you know, influencing our children into the future, you know, and they never have enough money. They I know at my my store, I have many teachers that come in and they buy a lot when we have markdowns, uh, especially the back to school stuff, and uh, you know they buy it for their their class because they you know it, it's not bought for them and that's totally ridiculous. Um, you know these school districts run too lean and mean. I know there's. A high school that's not far from a suburb here that uh, is cutting out football. Um, I think some music programs, um, you know, uh, teachers really have a rough time. Yeah. Well, you prefer a car you drive myself. I, I like to drive. I, you know, um, I would be very, um, hard to let you know it's hard for me to let someone else drive sometimes um because i guess it's, it's a control thing but um to uh have uh something else drive and that might be the you know it's probably it's gonna be the future um you know will it help say you know save lives or accidents and that i don't i don't know Oh, so still speaking about cars, Hyundai joins the Linux Foundation to embrace AGL's open source connected car tech. So Hyundai has become the latest car company to explore serious open source alternatives for developing its in-car services. So, um... And it says, from a report, ahead of CES 2019, the South Korean automotive giant today announced that it has joined the Linux Foundation and the nonprofit seven-year-old automotive-grade Linux AGL effort as it looks to contribute to and reap benefits from software developed by over 140 companies. For Hyundai, open collaboration is crucial as it pursues a connected car vision. Paul Chu, VP and head of Infotainment Technology Center at Hyundai, said in a statement, car companies have traditionally taken three years or longer to develop in-vehicle services such as infotainment systems. The bottleneck usually lies in the quality of code in their in-house programmers create. According to a case study published by AGL, a connected car uses some 100 million lines of code, which is about 11 times more than the number that went into the F-35 fighter jet. Getting on AGL's bandwagon will also help Hyundai speed up development of its car technology. So how about that? You know, these car makers are going to get into um, a, uh, all this technology.
So sleepy, uh, your commute to work is your me time, and that's why you prefer to drive. I am pretty lucky. I am 12 minutes at max, you know, on a normal traffic day from uh, where I work. Um, I've been as far as an hour away, and that's no fun. Um, that's probably also one of the reasons why I'm at um, my store so long is because I'm, you know, 10, 12 minutes from home and I don't have to kind of rush home, especially now that my son's 23. There's no, you know, my wife and I both work and we don't need to kind of run home in that. Uh, so, Sleepy, you're not so convinced about increasingly car complex car entertainment tech? Just need a hard disk storage and Bluetooth and easy navigation to control it. Yeah. Um, yeah, just a, a little a little system would work in most of these cars, but, um, you know, uh, it, it's nice uh, with the sync. I don't have to plug in my phone to be able to use Android Auto. I don't need it all the time because now I get this information on the phone. Android Auto is great for when I'm going on long trips and I need to use the, the map in that. And I don't have to have a holder in that. My phone can sit off to the side and it's right on the screen. So you prefer emphasis on good quality components like speakers and sound dampening? Yeah. So your, your wife's been a teacher for 30 plus years. That is a long time, Paul. Uh, yeah, it's a, that's a, a good, te you know, finding a good teacher, you know, um, they're, they're, it's, you know, what's the, what's the impetus of them becoming a teacher now? You know, the, the pay sucks. Um, you know, you, you get the crap, uh, you, you know, I, I hear people, oh yeah, well they get the summer off. Well, a lot of teachers don't because they're planning their, 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 um, year out. I'm interested, Paul. So we, we actually homeschooled our son. So, um, uh, my, I, I've mentioned my son, you know, is a young adult with autism, uh, high function in that, but you know, we, we had little struggles in school. Um, we got lucky in, in kindergarten and first grade. He had a teacher that really embraced, you know, helping him and that by second grade, he had a teacher that had been, unfortunately, a teacher for like 20 years. And uh, the teacher that actually wanted my son already had a couple put in his class. So he was put in this other teacher's class that was a little more hardcore. It took a better part of a year for me meeting after school and with my wife and going to um, IPAs um, and um, uh, um, uh, oh, I'm sorry, IPA, IDPs in development, individual and development plans that they have for these kids before she started working well with Chasm. But my wife had gone to work for the school district. Um, as a teacher's aide to kind of pay back and be able to be off in the afternoons when, when my son got off of school. So um, at from basically third grade on, my wife homeschooled my son. Now, my, my wife is very intelligent. She's well planned out. She missed getting a, a degree in psychology by that much. She you know, never went back to school. But my son is... Uh, he can argue a point, you know, he's got his little autistic moments, but he, you know, he can argue his point. He's very intelligent. She's done a really good job. But one of the things that we did, so I'm, I'm interested in maybe from a teacher's perspective, you know, I know, and maybe most parents might like it. So what we did, what she did was he would be on nine weeks and then two weeks off the nine weeks and two weeks off. And, she found that helped with his retention of, you know, the lessons she was giving him. And then it gave him two weeks to kind of, you know, chill down. And he got used to it. You know, I mean, he didn't know much different. Um, 
and if we went on vacation, it wouldn't matter if he was in a school time. We we took his school books with. He didn't he didn't get an extra vacation if we went on vacation at a time when um, he uh, was in his school mode. So I know it's been talked about. So our, our our summers off goes well back to the day of you know early farming when the kids had to come home and help their kids, you know, their parents with farming and all that. Is there really a need for kids to have all these we all these months off in a row? Is it better for them to have two weeks off? Does that hurt home? Does that hurt teachers? What you know? So, Paul, that would be a, an interesting point to, um, you know, uh, I know some teachers get part-time jobs for those few months and things like that, but um, does that something work? I, I, I understand maybe in other countries they do that, um, but here in the States, no, you know, they get their, their summers off, and even that's kind of waning. It used to be when I was in the, when I was in the, public school system for Chicago, we went back in September and we got out in June. So we were off from June through September. Oh, so your wife went, uh, yeah, we talked about it. I mean, my wife has been out of school for 20, 30 something years now. Um, and we've talked about it. Um, She's actually now she you know she works in our local library. She's been with the library system for a long time, for quite a few years now. She's actually now thinking of going getting her what is it, librarian degree, you know, so she can go, you know, a more proper. No, I can't. Um, I, f I forget what what it's um, the degree is for um, a librarian, um, but she loves working at the library, you know. Uh, she's around books and she is a book nut. So we, we need the rest of the government back to common law as opposed to corporate law. Yeah. Yeah. So over in Australia, teachers don't get paid pretty good either. Going to go back. I was kind of chatting here a bit and go back and see what stuff I missed. Yeah, you can. I think a lot of administrations are going down the tubes. They are. Uh, Ramon, which webcam do you use to do your live streams? It's a um, uh, Logitech C920. Um, Yeah, uh, Johan, you can have the best amplifier, but your speakers suck. It is useless. Yes, it is. Um, Ford, so uh, my car I just got um, rid of, I had a 2007 Escape, and that was the first car with a real good sound system in it that had the um, amplifier and, and all that. Um speakers all in the right spot um i think most of the car has done really well uh although i think i i for whatever reason my other car seemed to have a better sound than my new car maybe i just got to get used to it So Johan, when in the Netherlands, when I went to school, I had one week in the springtime, two weeks at with Easter, uh, six weeks vacation, one week with the fall, and two weeks with Christmas. That's kind of about here. You know, they get spring break, they get some kind of fall break, they get you know. Um, but um, you know, as, as a you know, if as a parent does working or having your child nine weeks on 
it might have been longer. I could I, I'd have to look at it could have been twelve weeks, two weeks off. So many weeks on, so many weeks off. Does that help with parents planning vacations? Does that help with um, you know, reduced um daycare? Because daycare is pretty expensive, especially here in the States. Uh, so, Mogo, you have a Microsoft Life Cam webcam, and you have DUVC view, and yeah, it it it's 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 funny. I don't know if it's because you know on my on my desktop, the C twenty, nine twenty, the C nine twenty doesn't work as well as when I'm on my Linux laptops. I mean, the, the, you know, and they're running 1804. I don't know if that's the difference um, or, you know, because one of my laptops, in fact, I'm kind of hiding it today the way I got my screen. I set up my, so that laptop back there actually doesn't have a webcam. So when I'm on, I got to use the, C, you know, the 920 on there. Um, uh the laptop picks up you know good image off the screen i have no problem running 1080p off the webcam uh picks up the microphone in fact when i went on big daddy linux last night i was given a crap load of feedback because <clears throat> the laptop everything i had to go into pulse and and kill the speaker on the laptop, the speaker on the webcam, and just make sure that my headset and the video cam was working. It was really weird. I don't have that in, you know, the, my desktop running Peppermint 8 doesn't pick up the microphone on the webcam. I, I It's a desktop, so it has no other internal microphone. So that's not a problem. But, um, yeah, get a, you know, um, a, a C920. They're pretty inexpensive these days um or i think there's a the newer one is the 930 but um you know if you're doing just basic stuff and it, it got the ability to stream it or you know hangouts is going to do 720 no matter what your camera is you know if it's a 1080 that's just the way hangouts is i skype you can use the full 1080 um so a 920 you know um let me look something up here. Let's see. So just looking at eBay. I guess buying it new is forty nine ninety nine. Um, but it, it, you know, it does seem to work pretty well with um, Linux. You know, no no real extra drivers. And actually, so on that laptop, I'm not running GUCV View. Or GUVC view, Gukavu, whatever it is. I don't have the test utility on there. It just picks up the camera. So, Johan, you at your work, you have 15 days vacation, and you get 15 hours per four weeks. Okay. Yeah, I. Um, we're having changes. I'm, in, I'm I got 30 plus years with my 37 years with my company. I get five weeks, which I can barely take. Um, but in 2020, we're losing. We're only can only max out. We can only get four weeks of vacation because most of us are unable to take it. So they figured we don't need it. But. Vince, you're thinking about upgrading the wife's car to a Subaru Forester. Uh, the new model has facial recognition. It'll recognize you and adjust your seat, climate, and infotainment center. Oh, jeepers, creepers. 
That's uh Does it also say good morning, Dave? The Subarus are selling the safety aspects of it to detect driver fatigue. I'm afraid it'll constantly alert me that I'm sleepy. <laughs> oh, too funny, Fence. Too funny. So. In America, we live to work, and you work to live. Yeah. Yeah. You know, living the dream, right? You know, but, hey, you know, sometimes we have a choice of where we work and how we want to work. Sometimes we don't. But I think in most cases, we have to try to make the best of it. I mean, you can be miserable your whole life. I mean, I've worked with those people. I, I tell you, my job is not, it, it should be at my age and my point in my career should be really easy. And it's, it's not because changes are inevitable. Um, Amazon rattles its saber and the whole retail world, you know, shutters, you know, um, and it causes ripples throughout <clears throat> all parts of the, you know, of any company, retail company. But uh, you know, you gotta make the best. So if you work with good people, you know, I, I, I have good people that I, I, that work for me. Um, you know, we kind of like I got a family going because it's my second home. I mean, I'm, I'm with some of my people more than I am with my own family. You know. Um, That's the way the job is, you know, but it's paid the bills. It's got me a house and it got me several cars, you know, over the years and, um, you know, getting my son through at least junior college right now. Uh, no, Omega, uh, Roman, I'm, uh, Ramon, Roman, Ramon. I am, I, I, uh, am a retail, um, uh, manager. I, I run a, a retail uh, store. It's, I work for a corporation. Um, you know, I don't mention it too much um, because I want to kind of keep that separate. Yeah, I do talk about the job, but um, you know, company's been good to me. You know, I, I can't really complain. I mean, changes are, again, changes are inevitable. Do the best that I can to accommodate and, and work. But um, no, computers is just, <clears throat> excuse me a second, I got to mute, clear my throat, sorry. Sorry about that. Um, my brother-in-law kind of got me into computers. I'm going to date myself back in 89. He sold me a early IBM 186, and that was my foray into computers, and everything self-taught. Um, you know, all up through the years, I've put together my own computers. I've rebuilt them. I've replaced parts, you know, um, I know a lot and I don't know a lot, you know, um, like I, I couldn't remember how to get to the task thing and that, you know, cause I don't use windows that much anymore. Um, Carmine does, and he was very helpful. So, oh, uh, Johan, my car is a Peugeot, Peugeot. 108, which is a French car, but built with Toyota Technique. It's four years old now, and it never let me down. Yeah. You know, um, we're on our third escape, basically. I had a 2007. My wife's got a 2013. I now have a 2018. The 2007 was just about 12 years old. Um and I ended up, I you know, I could have tatered it in, uh, or I could have sold it to someone. Um, what I did, I looked up charities, and there's a Make a Wish Foundation, which is uh, a very good accredited um, charity. 
Um, and they went through uh, America Auto Auction. My 2007 Escape, I just got a letter the other day that um, they were able to sell it for $2,000. 2007, you know, it tells you a lot about the escapes. The only major problem I had is um, three years ago, the transmission kind of went out. And that was my biggest expense. Um, the, 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 the nagging problem and the escapes were, I had a V6 in it, were notorious for um, leaking oil. And you know you go into it, go into the you know the the dealer, and it's like, oh, it's this gasket. Then the next time it's this gasket. Then the next time it's this gasket, and you're spending hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And my garage floor is kind of ruined in one area. I got to try to really clean it good, try to get the oil out of there. But Sergey, how are you doing, sir? What a bad idea to turn an HP laptop into a Chromium book. But you're probably right. But I want to try it. I mean, it's, uh, you know, um, it was, uh, you know, something no one talks about really much. I know, you know, it's it's, it's Linux-based, you know, but uh, just doing something a little different, you know. Um, you know, it didn't garner a lot of uh, attention, but that's okay, you know. There are some people that are interested in it, and I want to see if it works uh, you know, it works the way it works. Um, but if I had my choice, I would be putting peppermint on it. You know, MX-18 is, is nice. Um, you know, run with the Dolphin and his team. Remind me a lot of the peppermint team. But, um, you know, they're, you know I, I like peppermint because it's minimal. You install what you want to install. Um, and, and that's it, you know, and it, it just seems to work on everything I put it on. But, um, yeah, I, that's, 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 that's why Sergey, I know, you know, um, it's it's easy, you know, um, but you know I I've um, done a lot. Of, I mean I haven't done reviews on them, but personally, I've done live you know um, USBs on you know, Ubuntu, Mate, KDE, um, MX seventeen. Um, I did, uh, I actually, the other day I was looking at Pop! OS because, uh, you know, Tim was talking about it. I, you know, it, what it turns out, I do not like the GNOME desktop. I just don't. Um, you know, it lo looked nice and that. Let's see, I do. I did, um, I think, uh, the Budgie, you know. So I've done a lot of um personally live USBs. I haven't um, I've installed a couple of them and, and, and replaced them in that. I know you talk you know you, you've mentioned you know to try to you know um, Arch or one of the others and I just don't have the time for that. And uh, last night we saw on, on Big Daddy Lennox, you know um, Rocket was doing a stream from uh, an Arch install and everything froze up on him. Yeah, you know, if you can, Ramon, get a get a, um, a Logic Tech C920. Um, you know, uh, you know, if you can afford uh, one, you know, uh, it. it just seems to work. I, I, I plug it in. Like I said, that laptop back there doesn't have um, UVC view or the V4L2. I just plugged it in and it picked it up and it worked. So sleepy uh, at Mugen. I'm about to be over patriotic. That's an Aussie car. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Holden is an Aussie Opal. <laughs> sure, Sir J, hold on one second. Okay, you should be able to do it now, Sergey. Um, oh, you know, and uh, try to remind everybody at least one stream, check out um, Omega Beast's um, link. Uh, he, has, he, he likes to run Antergos and... Uh, it's a intergos with uh, KDE uh, Ramon, um, but he's been customizing his desktop. Um, he's got it very um, uh, Mac you know, OS looking, and he's doing a real sweet job on it. Looks really nice. I, I think if you've had it on a system and, and Mac uh, users might not know the difference at first. So if anybody would, you know, want to shoot me an email at stevesveryown at gmail.com, probably be on for another good, uh, till 10 o'clock, um, you know, another hour, well, not an hour, um, another 20, 33 minutes. And we can chat. You guys don't have to listen to me the whole time. So on uh, those uh, articles on the automobiles, um, are we putting too much, te too much technology in cars? All right, another article. One of the most refresh uh, says Canonical shares top ten Linux snaps of 2018 from BetaNews.com. One of the most refreshing aspects of Linux in 2018 was the popular popularity of snaps. Canonical revealed that the containerized packages have been a smashing success. Today, the Ubuntu maker highlights what it feels are the top ten snaps of 2018. Okay, from a report, with 2018 drawing to a close and many of us spending with, with family during the holidays, I thought we'd take a look back over some of our favorite Linux applications in the Snap Store. Some have been in the store for over a year, and a few landed only recently, but they're all great, says Alan Pope. And if Alan says it, it must be true. Uh, Conical shares the top 10 Snaps. Spotify, Slack, VLC, NextCloud, Android Studio, Discord, Plex Media Server, Zonotic, spelled X O N O N O T I C, Notepad Plus Plus, and Shotcut. Um, what do you guys think? Uh, I'm, I've done a couple of snaps. Um, I I seem to have issues where this the the snap version has a hard time either getting to some of my files. Um, or, um, like I, I like to use vid cutter, um, as a quick way to edit some of my, my, uh, videos, um, and the snap version. So on, I tried to install it on the respin, um, the flat and the fat, the, the snap and the flat pack. And, um. It wouldn't install. I had to get the PPA for it. 
Yeah, Sergey, avoid flat packs and snap as much as possible. You know. Yeah, um, although, I mean, it's claimed that when the, with a flat pack, you're going to get quicker updates and stuff. I don't know how true that is. Um, but they just don't, I don't seem to have luck with them. The, the, um, like I said, the vid cutter snap nor the flat pack would install on that laptop. So I went with a PPA. Um, when I did have a snap on my other laptop, uh, it wouldn't save the videos. It would just stop at midpoint. Um, uh, let's see, um, even with like app image, so like Carmine on total OS is, he, he uses the app image for Ken live. Um, but, uh, I try the app image and I can't seem to access some of my files, you know, where I can save the, the video and all that. So I downloaded Kaden live as a PPA, you know? You know, snaps in that, it sounds like a great idea if it can be cross-platform, but it, there must be still a lot of work to it. Um, Sergey, the best source is the source code. Yeah, because, yeah, because, again, you, you know, it's like all the issues that there are with Android apps. You know, you got to... Um, uh, uh, you know, hope the developer is you know, good and honest for one, and that they know what they're doing. Excuse me a second. So wearing headsets sometimes causes my ears to get warm. Uh, let's see. Oh, hi. Um, so I just a, a little update. So I don't have much of a studio going um, as far as, you know, I got my camera, I got these. So I, but I made another step. I got a, a set of um, LED lights coming in, uh, ordered from Amazon. Um, Cause right now, actually I have a desktop lamp kind of in front of me, which with a, with a shade on it, that does pretty nice with the, 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 the lighting, but I got specific lights coming. And then my next step is to maybe get a uh, boom arm and a maybe uh, you know a nice uh, uh, microphone, so I can kind of take these off and look a little more professional. You know, eventually set up a, a small studio. Um, so sleepy, it'd be nice if someone made an easy. GUI source code compiler from noobs like me. And you can, yeah, I've grown up too, just wishing I was young and carefree again. Yeah, you know, sometimes I wish, you know, I knew what I knew, you know, that old, I wish I knew what I knew now back then. Um, if you have this, so Sergey, if uh, you have the source code, either you can compile it yourself or you can use a tool called uh, Source to Package. If Steven answered my numerous emails, I already have shown how to do that. Are you talking about me, Steve, or Steve EB? Because I don't, um, haven't gotten any emails from you. Yeah, it's another thing on my, my Linux bucket list to, you know, learn, you know, to do some coding, um, to try that, um, and to eventually at least try, you know, Arch or something like that, EB. Yeah, EB is a special brand of kitty cat. But he is, you know... Outside of when he has his meltdowns about Linux and he went back to Windows 7.
Isn't Librem five the uh, uh, um, phone? Yeah. Uh, Sleepy, that's a good one. Yeah, uh, Omega should contribute your theme to elementary. Then their theming wouldn't look like such a cheap knockoff. You know, it's not that, you know, not to knock any developers. I mean, I have no idea, you know, Sergey, you know, because you do a lot of this stuff, what it takes to really develop a system in that. But I do not, I, I, I you know, I guess you either love or you hate elementary. I don't hate it, but I don't like it. I don't, the, the icons to me are a little bit, I don't want to say childish. I don't want to offend anybody that working on that, but there are much better icon sets out there. Um, I don't like the Pantheon desktop. What I do really like, <clears throat> excuse me, is their um, panel at the top. <clears throat> and I like how it um, it's, transparent but when you bring up and i like a transparent panel but then you bring up your browser or a program and you got transparency on your panel <clears throat> so you bring up a program and a trans and the transparency goes it matches the color of the um you know the theme of the program that's coming out whether it's your browser and that i think that's a real nice little touch um you know, that's just me, but the rest of it, you know, <clears throat> you know, and as Linux users, everybody complains about the lockdown, but we have to kind of remember any new users coming over from Windows are kind of used to a lockdown system. They're not going to want to play with a lot of stuff. They're going to want something that works, that they can get right into their, you know, um, you know, browsing or whatever they need to do. So maybe you know it's the the idea is really good, um, but um, you know once and once they learn elementary and they maybe learn Linux, then they can go on from that. So I you know I don't think they should be knocked for having a more lockdown system. I, I think new users need that. You know if if they're first coming over, you know you know guys like me I I tinkered with Windows. Back in the day, 95, 98, you know, um, <clears throat> I broke I broke Windows more than I ever broke Linux. You know, I, I you know, it was it, it was a, a crazy uh, what I did with Windows because I tried and a lot of programs didn't work and it would break it and the blue screen of death. <sighs> but, um, you know, that's a different track there, but. So a lockdown system is not a bad idea for brand new users. What do you guys think? I mean, you know, um, GNOME is becoming back down. Now again, I, I'm, I'm not a big fan of the GNOME desktop. I don't like the workflow. <clears throat> Excuse me again, I'm sorry. Sorry about that. But, um, um, I mean, it, it's nice. Um, the enterprise version of Windows XP and Windows 7. Was, you know, once, I mean, XP had very little problems compared to 95, 98. Windows 7 had very less problems. I, I liked Windows 7. At first, Arrow, you know, the desktop looked nice, but then it got kind of dated. Um, but I was happy on Windows 7, um, and, uh, you know, um, I, I had some, a couple of decent programs that worked really well, um, you know, um, you know, Paul, I remember breaking Windows 95 immediately after a fresh install, did it all the time, but that's how we learn. Yeah, that, that, that's how I, I learned. Um, and searching for answers was not easy because, you know, you go to the Windows forum or, you know, the Microsoft site and I didn't find much help, um, you know, 
So over the years with Windows, I was used to looking up stuff. So when I came to Linux, it really wasn't a, a, a feat for me to learn, you know, and to figure out how to get the system working. And if I did something to it. And when I f first installed Linux, you know, on um, the little netbook, it I, I, I broke it often because I was playing with it. You know, um, there was nothing on the little laptop that we needed to save. But, um, you know, now it's been pretty stable. I don't do a lot of crazy stuff on my desktop. It's got my Peppermint 8 on there, you know. Um, and you can, I used to break windows just to find flaws and fix their screw-ups. Now it's so locked down, no one really has control. And in the words of Zebban, next. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, you know, I, I, the, the look of um, elementary, you know, they, they do spend time with it. Is it as pretty as some of it, some people tout? I don't think so. Um, I think the way um, I got my Peppermint desktop um, set up is much prettier than, uh, than that, but that's me, you know. And Ohm 2, which is what, what like Mate is based on, um, you know, Mate looks nice. Um, and I, 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 I went on it for a, a week or so, you know, um, I guess either I'm just too used to or so used to the XSCE style desktop, um, you know, um, that any like the GNOME environments, you know, especially, you know, GNOME 3. Uh, Ubuntu, um, I, you know, I don't like um, Budgie. Um, what is a version of like GNOME 2 also? I mean, the Raven menu is um, nice, but again, I just something about the look. Um, Mate was better with G2, GTK2. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, Paul, yeah, I'm a proponent for XFCE. Um, you know, uh, if you install Zubuntu, I mean, I think their theming's got a little bit better. But, it, you know, theming matters. Um, you know, when I was first looking at distros, it was like, um, why do I want to install something that looks old, you know? I use Windows 95. <clears throat> I don't need to use it again today, you know. Um, so they've done better with their theming. Um, I know, you know, some might not think Peppermint out of the box is nice looking, but I think they've done a nice job to make it look decent, um, you know, and not to offend, and I think most people in Peppermint understand, or any other distribution you're on, your version or your vision of your desktop <clears throat> may not be mine. If under the hood works, you know, um, why not change it? So I got my desktop set up the way it works in the flow and all that. And yeah, XSE, he doesn't have to look old. Um, So, uh, you, you, you know, Sergey, you think the MX theming is better than Peppermint? Now, <clears throat> I see why they want the um, panel on the side. I've did that for a while because of the real estate. Um, but you know, I I like two panels because of the way I do my things. Um, it flows better for me. Um, if you look at my Google Plus account, why it's still open, I have a bunch of um, screenshots of all the different versions of um, the way I tried to style, style my desktop. Uh, Debian is better than Ubuntu. <clears throat> um, you 
you know, I, I guess. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me again, folks. Early morning frog. Yeah, uh, Johan, as long as the theme is dark, I do. I prefer the dark themes, too. Um, so I, I got, you know, a couple users on my Peppermint desktop, you know, so my son can go on. So where I'm sitting, you know, is actually I got my laptop on top of his laptop, and then there's my desktop. He's on his laptop playing. He's doing all sorts of things on Steam, or he's got a game maker program. He's making games. He's doing Gary Mod, and then he's got videos going up, and he's got, eight tabs open um, with a video in each tab going back and forth. Um, but he likes the light theme. So I leave the light theme on for him, but it's like, you know, like you, you go on and it hurts your eyes. On um, yeah, the, 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 the dark theme on peppermints um, pretty decent. On my other laptop that I have just Peppermint 9 on, um, I downloaded and tested out a, a uh, it's, it's, it's an XFCE dark theme. I think that's what it's called. And the gray, you know, and they're just a little bit different in that, but it looks really nice. Yeah, I don't, um, I haven't played with, you know, I, I kind of leave it. Once I get it set up, um, I used to, like I said, for a while there, I was testing all different themes and different panels and and uh, uh, um, docs and all that. And I'm I'm settled. What I have now is what I what I um, use. But yeah, XSCE, you know, is nice. Um, Sergey likes to go with the mother distribution and not a child of it. So, but yeah, the um, uh, MX team is is doing a really nice job, and um, I'll, I'll I'll give it a spin again. Like I said, I I tried uh, or I looked at MX seventeen. Um, it's going to be a lot to get me away from, you know, peppermint. I just, it just, I like it. Um, I think more, any distribution probably with XFCE would work well, but, um, I, you know, it's just, um, a good vibe from the, you know, the peppermint team and there's a good vibe coming from the, uh, MX team run for dolphin run with the dolphin is, uh, a, 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 a decent person. He's, uh, He's very user, um, um, he understands the user and what they want, and, and he's trying. And I gather he helped out um, Mark on Peppermint uh, 9 Respin, so he got collaboration going. That's pretty cool. You know, uh, Carmine, uh, Total S, he, he uh, ran Antex, and he said it was really fast. Yeah, Ramon, I think he's looking for a, um, a look at your theme. Ramon's doing a really nice job with his. And then you, you, you learned um, all this on your own, right, Ramon? He's an ex-biker. A dolphin has a dual meaning in my eyes. <laughs> Let's see.
Let's see. Any other things worth talking about on news? Well, let me read just one last article on that, and it's it's titled "Is Linux Taking Over the World?" It's from NetworkWorld.com. And so, how many times have we heard this? Hey, Ghost Mirror, how you doing? Um, it took uh, uh so I did the, I um created the USB. It took uh, well over 20 minutes, 25 minutes to create. Um, and uh, I'm still streaming off the Windows uh, laptop, so it hadn't you know crashed, but it was getting up there in uh, use of uh, memory in that. So welcome to the stream. So the article reads, 2019 just might be the year of Linux. Okay, well, first of all, so I'm from Chicago, and I guess we can't say this anymore. So if you're a baseball fan, how many times have we Chicago fans that said, wait till next year until the Cubs finally won the, won the World Series after 108 years? Hopefully it won't take 108 years for Linux to you know be the year. But anyway, so 2019 just might be the year to le Linux, the year in which Linux is fully recognized as the powerhouse it has become, writes Network World's Unix dweeb. The fact is that most people today are using Linux without ever knowing it, whether on their phones, online when using Google, Facebook, Twitter, GPS devices, and maybe even in their cars, or when using cloud storage for personal or business use. While the presence of Linux on all these systems may go largely unnoticed by consumers, the role, the role that Linux plays in this market is a sign of how critical it has become. Most LOT and embedded devices uh, those small limited functionality devices that require good security and a small footprint and fill so many niches in our technology driven lives run some variety of Linux. And this isn't likely to change. Instead, we'll be just seeing more devices and a continued reliance on open source to drive them. According to the Cloud Industry Forum, for the first time, businesses are spending more on cloud than on inter internal infrastructure. The cloud is taking over the role that data centers used to play, and it's largely Linux that's making the transition so advantageous. Even on Microsoft's Azure, the most popular operating system is Linux. It is first voice of the enterprise survey. 451 research predicted that the 60% of nearly 1,000 IT leaders surveyed plan to run the majority of their IT off premises by 2019. That equates to a lot of IT efforts relying on Linux. Gardner states that 80% of internally developed software is now either cloud enabled or cloud native. Uh, the article also cites Linux uses an AI data lake, data lakes and in Sierra supercomputer to monitors America's nuclear stockpile, concluding that it's a domination of LOT cloud technology. Supercomputer and AI Linux is heading into 2019 with a lot of momentum. And there's even a long list of upcoming Linux conferences. So that says a lot about Linux as a system, but it doesn't say anything about Linux as the desktop. Okay, Vince, thanks for stopping by. Um, yeah, get some shut eyes, my friend. Um, good seeing you twice in a day or seeing you in two days. So let's see here. Sergey, the year of Linux started in 1991. Yeah. For Johan, it started in 2017. You can, yes, Linux has been at the top of the server side for quite a while now. The reason the corporate entities want want to home in on it and the action and muddy the waters on the desktop side. There, I said it.
And Ghost Mirror, you like uh, messing around with Linux systems on a SPC, single board computer, like the Raspberry Pi or Odroid. And Paul, yeah, the growth of Linux is why Microsoft wants its paws into it so badly. Yeah, possibly. So, a lot of good things about Linux, you know, uh, you know, the desktop, you know, uh, which, uh, you know, hope for the best, you know. Um, its strengths are its weaknesses, you know, its community. Um, uh, the fragmentation is what kind of kills it, you know. Um, choice is great, but choice is too much. I don't know. Uh, Sergey Linus said he would consider himself as the winner if MS would ever ask to be helped, which happened which happened with Azure. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to actually end in three minutes. I'm getting hungry. Um, DT is always great to watch. I will probably maybe, I don't know if I'll jump on, jump on, but I'll probably get in the chat after I get breakfast set up. But, um, yeah, DDT is uh, always fun to watch. So, well, any uh, any uh, final comments? I want to thank everybody for uh, stopping by. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll see tomorrow evening how well um, the cloud-ready Chromium OS works. Um, thanks for stopping by, Ghost Mirror. Appreciate uh, the, the the support. Um, you know. Uh, oh, thank you, Sergey. I want to thank you for your um, you know um, your your opinions and your you know your suggestions. Um, you know. I, I know uh, a, a while back, uh, EB was uh, giving you some grief in that, but um, no, I, um, you're very knowledgeable, and I, I appreciate any comments you you shoot my way. Um, I, I hopefully, you know, plan to learn more and and, and get better. Um, so everybody, you guys have a great uh, morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you're from. Um, thank you again for stopping by. Uh, I will be on um, again tomorrow night uh, for a short while. Uh, it works out. Um, I take my son to his karate class, and I have about a good almost an hour to kind of like do my own thing. Um, and uh, we'll we'll see how this uh, chromium stuff works out. Uh, oh, thank you, Omega. Uh, you know, I, I appreciate it. Um, you know, um, like I said, I, I, I want to do this like we're at a coffee shop or at a good pub, having a couple of uh, drinks with some friends. Um, so, yeah, you guys go on. You guys watch. Um, you know, enjoy your afternoon, morning, evening, wherever it's from. If you're going to bed, have a good sleep. If you're going to work, have a good day. Um, appreciate the support. And uh, thanks for stopping by. So, you guys take care, and uh, uh, everybody be well, okay? Appreciate it. Have a good day now. Oh, thank you, Sergey. I'll, 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 I will, you know, even my wife commented that I'm um, doing, doing better than that. Those, I actually have two of them, but my, and my wife is actually wearing one of them. Yeah, so... If I can get her off of Windows 10, that would be great. So, okay, you guys, take care. Uh, tell DTI I said hi if you're going over there. Tell EB I said hi if you're going over there. And uh, bye.